Hey, look up in the sky. What's that? Is that a bird? Is that a plane? No, you idiots. It's... Meteor Strike, the Lego game. Hey, guys. Welcome to Brick Boy, the show where we review Lego sets. And today we got our first Lego game in quite a while. It is Meteor Strike. And this game is pretty darn cool. It's one of my favorites. Um, but there are a lot of great ones. Harry Potter game. Pirates Code. Or Code. Sorry. Uh, and Minotaurus. Those are all great games. And I do have a couple others I want to review, but I just... No one really wants to play, uh, those games. So I, I want to give them a, a full... I want to give those games justice before I review them. That's why I haven't reviewed them yet. But we do have LEGO Meteor Strike for now. And Meteor Strike is pretty neat. So let's get a good look at it, and beforehand the music is from Star Fox 64, the Meteo level, the asteroid belt, and, you know, meteors, Meteo, it's an asteroid belt, you've figured out why I've made this music track for this review. So, let's take a look at this box. I'm sure it's gonna be pretty awesome. No, I'm kidding. Okay, Meteor Strike, it's got some meteors up there. There's a, two spacemen's playing the games. And yeah, it's two player. Th this, I think, is the only LEGO game that is only two players. The game, the only LEGO game that you have to play with a certain amount of players. I mean, you, there's only one amount of players you can play it with, which is kind of strange. Ages 7 and over, uh, that's a pretty good uh, recommendation. And, uh, 10 to 10, 20 minutes, that's a pretty good estimation. It's not a very long game, definitely not. Mi probably not even gonna be 20 minutes, unless you play with a certain specific rule, which is actually one of the default rules. But yeah, Choking Hazard. Toys contain small parts and a small ball. It actually contains five of those. Not for children under three. Is it also not for children under eight? Okay. I'm just joking. Watch my uh, sneak peek Oshawa 10 review for why that is awesome. That's why that is just so stupid. So yeah, it's also a special edition game, which is pretty cool. Uh, in the back, some playing, taking off pieces of the dice. Yeah. And let's just slide this up and see what's inside. We got the instruction manual and the building booklet. We got four extra game tiles to put on the dice and the wrench that comes in all LEGO games to take off the tiles and the dice. Is there a LEGO game that doesn't have any dice? I'm not sure. Um, I feel like there is. Does Orient Bazaar come with a die? I don't know. I feel like I have one. I'm just being really stupid. But yeah. It's the box. Um, actually, the board game barely even fits in the box. It just barely slides in. Like, it'll be touching both the walls. Like, this board right here will be touching the top wall and the bottom wall. Which is a little interesting. Let's actually get the box out of the way so we can get a little better look at the game. Yay. But now we're just gonna pick that up anyway, so it doesn't matter. So yeah, here's the game. Actually comes on a pretty nice stand. This, I didn't make this, but it's, it actually comes on this. And yeah. You can adjust the stand a little. It does fold down so it fits in the box. But when you're playing, it just stands like that. And obviously you can't stay in the box on just on the stand. So what you do is take off these two pieces on the sides and not leave that black part in it. No, that's exactly what I'm doing. Meteos are pretty fun stage. You can get over 200 points if you want the badge. See, so yeah, I take off those two pieces on the sides, and then it just comes off. Whoa. I just fell off my bed. Okay, so... 
It's got three little uh, drop, three little spots there for you to drop the marbles. It's got six little pegs on the side there, 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 and there. Fell off the red micro figure. Yeah, it comes with two micro figures, by the way. It's got these two spinzing things. Is... So yeah, basically, the idea is to drop the meteors. Just a second, let me put this back on the stand. I don't know why I took it off. Just wanted to show you, I guess. The idea is to drop the meteors into your base to get the to get points. And yeah, you use those three slots on the top to do so. See ya. Oh, they would fall on the floor. So like, see here. I, I can drop one on the, one of the three slots, and see that I went to the red guy. Oh, sorry. So that gave the red guy a point. See, so yeah, let me show you what's on the dice now. Uh, I'm trying to put these meteors down. Whatever, just put them in the thing. See, so yeah, you have two of these uh, golden tiles. Which basically you can draw the meteor on one of the three slots. So you can drop it here. You can drop it here. Or you could drop it here. If you will run land that gold. I keep doing that, sorry. And whoever goals whoever's goal it goes into uh gets a point. And if it gets stuck on something, then it stays there. But if all five of the, your meteors get stuck on the board, like if all five of them are stuck behind that thing, then, uh, you know, they get removed from the board. And, you, you know. So the second tile is this thing. There's two of those. Which is a satellite. I believe it's satellite space. So you can take one of your five things. Let me just show you here. Each player gets five of these little satellites. You got the little missile one. That thing. You get two of those. You get this one. And the little circle. So you, once you roll that, you get to put one of these on the stage in between the these four little spots, so you can't put it too low and you can't put it too high. But this Kong's one hell of a guy, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. So I put it there. So now that will affect the bounce. So, and obviously if it bounces on that, then it will go over there. So yeah, basically the satellites are like one of the main parts of the game. Because you just, um, they can make it really annoying. And since there's two on the die, it seems like whenever I use two of them, the, the stage gets j just gets really clustered with satellites. And it's like nearly impossible to get any uh, meteors in. And it's just kind of annoying. Because there's only one way to get rid of them. That's what I don't, that's the main play I have about this game. Don't have two satellite tiles because your thing will just get completely cluttered with satellites. And it'll be really annoying to get rid of them. Now the white tile is only one of those. That allows you to move one of uh, these these things, the space stations. Take the marbles out. Or the meteors, sorry. So what I said, you could play, play satellites between that thing and that thing on both sides. So yeah, for this, for this tile, oh, stupid thing. I guess this 
game board isn't very stable. I write that. So you can move one of these things around between the the middle one and the high one. So put that there, and then that'll affect the bounce. Or you can also, if you get a white, you can just spin one, like if a gold marble. The game wouldn't keep falling apart. If a gold marble gets stuck here, you can turn it, and then you can get the point. So yeah, that's what the, uh, the white tile does. And the last one is the orange one. So you get to, uh, this one basically allows you to destroy a satellite on the field. So if this is on the field, and the blue player rolls an orange, they can use the laser cannon to destroy the, well, technically you don't have to use the laser cannon, but you destroy the satellite, and then that goes back to that player. So that's basically the gist of Meteor Strike. Um, it is really fun. You have to, to win, you have to get uh, 10 points to win. So, yeah. So the game does, it comes with two laser tiles, two space station tiles, three satellite tiles, and three meteor tiles. Now, I, th I think you should take off one of the space station tile or the satellite tiles and either replace it with a space station tile or replace it with nothing and just re-roll after that or like a wild tile where you can use any of the four actions. But just don't have two of these because that will make your game really long and boring. So yeah. This game is pretty darn fun. It's not one of my favorites. I think uh, the Harry Potter game, the Matator game, or Matatorus game, and Pirate Code are a little better than this one. But it's definitely better than some of the ones like Atlantis Treasure and some of the ones I haven't reviewed yet. So yeah, um... But sometimes, uh, even if you just have one satellite, there can be, I mean, yeah, one satellite tile on the stage, uh, at a time. I mean, one uh, tile on the dice, then, uh, you, you can still get really overloaded with, uh, satellites, and that can make the game a little boring, because you're just dropping things down, and sometimes you can be a little cheap with the space stations and... Um, how you place your satellites. So, now onto the ratings. Uh, cool factor? I'm gonna go four because um, it does, it's really cool, like, dropping the meteors down and, like, the space theme and it just does, it definitely looks very cool. It's definitely one of the coolest looking LEGO games. Uh, size? Oh, by the way, this is $20. And pieces is what? How many? 182 pieces. So size, I'm gonna go three because you you get this uh, it's big base plate. That's one piece, and it's pretty big, and you get a lot of uh, pieces. So I'm gonna go 3.5 on the size. Um, mock pieces, I'm gonna go 3.5 because a lot of the satellite, a lot of the clear pieces on the satellites look really cool. And the meteors are, if you couldn't tell, they are golden Zamospheres from Bionicle, which do actually exist. Um, if you bought the uh, the Zamosphere packs from the uh, the Paraka line, then you could get gold ones, silver ones, and uh, iron-colored ones, I guess. So yeah. And you also get, uh, like, a lot of cool, you, like, the reds and blues are really good looking. And a lot of good technis, technic pieces from the, the stand. And play value, I'm gonna go 4.5 because it is a really fun game. 
So overall, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. This is a very recommended LEGO game. Um, but definitely check out the ones like uh, Pirates. Like, if you're looking for a cheaper one, this one actually isn't that expensive. $20 isn't that bad. But I think the best cheap one you can get is Pirates Co. That one's really good. Wait, no, that's $20. Never mind, sorry. That's the same price as this one. But for $20, you can get a lot better LEGO sets. You can get, uh, you can get Pirates Code, or Pirate Code, sorry. You could get, uh, Fire Lord from Power, not Power Miners, Hero Factory. You could get, you, you know, you could get a lot of cool stuff for $20. And this is something cool, but definitely put it at your, uh, get some other things before you get this one. So, I guess I'll see you guys next time for more reviews of stuff and things! Later!